Madame de C. Yes, I'm yours. <laughs> You're mine. I wish you were mine. I would keep you. <laughs> How many years did you wait before you sang this role that is uh, a pinnacle? A lot, because actually I, I never had the voice for it. Still now. I mean, yeah, yeah. Because, because I'm a high soprano, and Violetta is not supposed to be a high soprano. Mm. She's supposed to be a lyric soprano, mm -hmm. and actually she's supposed to be a lyric spinto soprano, which is far away from a high soprano. But I, I really wanted to try. I don't regret anything. It's just that I was very frustrated because I was so happy to play the role, mm -hmm. but so miserable to, to have to sing it because, because I couldn't, in a way. Mm. I mean, you I, could. Could, I could with my voice, but yes. it's not enough for the role. It doesn't... Yeah, it, it, yeah, but it you doesn't manage, go. But you make the most beautiful effects that someone with a spinto voice or a dramatic voice could make in the third act. Yeah, but it was... Yeah, in the Even third act, the it's act. okay. The, 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 first, it's the first act, actually, and the second also are yeah. really dramatic. And that I couldn't really provide. Uh -huh. and, and it's a truism that not a true because we don't think it's particularly true but many people say that Traviata requires three different voices yeah, I, I would say two <laughs> maybe two. don't exaggerate <laughs> maybe two. but I, I, even two is too much <laughs> <laughs> right exactly exactly we only have one yeah. did you do you feel now that do you love the way it's written for the voice? The way that you love the way Lucia is written for the voice? No. For example. I no. think Lucia is a, it's better written for the voice. Okay. <laughs> yes. 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 But because I don't have that, that quality of a spinto, mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's well written for my voice. But mm -hmm. maybe for a real spinto, uh, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. For example, when I hear Maria Callas, for example, or, or Renata Scotto, or people like that, it seems to be very, very well written for the voice. <laughs> But on stage, it could have been written for you. <laughs> yeah, if I, so if I had known Mr. Verdi, if you had known Mr. I, <laughs> I would have told him, please, change it. <laughs> no, but do you love the way he wrote it for the character? Yeah, In I mean... You, we can yeah. see a fragility that... Yes, yes, and yes. And this yes. is also... A, 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 a cliche by now. We can see in you a fragility that we can't see in a larger body. Mm -hmm, we can't mm -hmm. see in a larger voice. We can look at you as strong and powerful as you are and yet believe that you're about to break. Yes. How, how, how did you experience that, particularly in a production like Sivadier's, where you are already naked in front of the public? You don't have a big dress. Yeah. You don't have anything to hide. I, I, what was that like? I don't know exactly how to answer this question because it's, um, it's um, a work with Jean-Francois. He... he used to talk to us a lot to tell us stories and and to tell us about his fantas phantasm and yeah. f and dreams around and about Traviata so that nourished us in a way but I couldn't explain in what way <laughs> because I don't I don't try to understand mm -hmm. um, mentally what it means, what it wants, and things like that. Mm -hmm. I try to embody. Yes. And yes. for that, I don't have the words. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But for example, if he doesn't allow you a pause, I remember from singing Traviata, there would be a break, and I would go back to my dressing room and think, thank you, Verdi, thank you for writing this, and then I get to change clothes. You don't have that opportunity in this production because no, but you I don't go like, straight I don't from like one breaks anyway. that. I don't, in general. It, it's it, easier to stay on and Yes, play. yes, and anyway, when I have a break, I don't know how to use it. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't know how to rest. Uh, it's just uh, maybe useful to take a drink or something like that, but, but it, it, it takes you from the part. I mean, in theater, for example, you, you, you don't have breaks. Right. I mean, it's, it's rare. Maybe you have moments yeah. when you're not on yes. stage, but you don't have a yeah. structural and it's a, break. It's really a story that continues and continues, and it's, it's better. Yep. Yep. One of the most brilliant things about this production was watching you go from the end of the party, collapsed in a heap, having had the money thrown at you, 
and then to turn around and watch you. Yes, slowly Hail Sage. Slowly rise and take off the hair. Mm -mm. It's such mm -mm. a beautiful moment. Yes. Do you, I've heard you say that when you see production videos of yourself, you don't recognize? Necessarily. Uh, no, and I don't like it necessarily. <laughs> there. So that's why I'm here. While the film. You're not watching <laughs> yes. what they're doing. Do you Over think there. that if you watched yourself in in this production, you might recognize yourself more uh, than some others? Not necessarily. No. No, no, because I'm not supposed to. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I, I'm supposed to be someone else You're anyway. Someone else. So Not even the rehearsal? If you saw the, how the, the yeah, process, in the rehearsal, what's in the rehearsal, like yeah, in the rehearsal is something else because there are, there are breaks, and and myself when I ask a question or when I when I make a joke or, mm -hmm. but um, it it has nothing to do with with a performance where where you you are concentrated to go inside, I wouldn't say in the character but inside of yourself to find something. Right, hmm? right, right. Who says we ever go inside the character? What is I that? don't know. What is I don't that? know right. what it is. Right. But yes. but I try to to go deep in, in myself to, to find this energy and these emotions. Was it difficult to go that deep with a camera crew in the room? Actually, because that's an unusual project. Yeah, we're used to having an audience in rehearsal, but we're not used to having a film crew unless yeah, you're making a movie. It's very disturbing. It was. It is. Ha. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's very disturbing at least at the beginning, and especially I remember a, a rehearsal, it was the first rehearsal where Charles Castronovo and I were together, yes. so we were supposed to have a love scene and things like that. So it's difficult because we don't know each other very well. Mm -hmm. Now we know each other mm -hmm. and we appreciate each other and things like that. But for the first time when you have, you have to rehearse with someone and go straight to a kiss, for example, <laughs> mm, you like to have your peace and your intimacy. Yeah, like intimacy. First, right? intimacy too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the crew was there and the crew was really here. And I I really didn't stand it. I never said anything. Of you wouldn't have, you wouldn't but after the rehearsal I said I said to them and to Jean Francois please tell them to go because I want to I want to work. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to be left alone when I'm working and when when we are searching something, you know, I don't want that Someone is, is in my kitchen looking what I'm preparing and their secrets, if there are some of the recipes. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that despite, despite your reluctance, they were able to give us any secrets? Because I know that people no. who... <laughs> <laughs> because that's the magic of it. We're going to learn something, but no, we won't learn actually, everything. No, actually, no, because... I, I, I did myself a lot of documentaries about yeah. my artistic life and the yes. process of the work. Yes. And actually, it, you can't film that because it's a question of time. It's a question of, of weeks mm -hmm. and days and days of rehearsing mm -hmm. and approaching a role and a, being in a process. So mm -hmm. you can't film time. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But in the end, mm -hmm. this film, this movie, is a very beautiful movie. Beautiful. And I don't regret. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. We feel, I feel, very grateful to have it. Yeah. Because me also. Because yeah. it's a fantastic memory for me. Good. Also. That is good. So to have a trace yes. of that work with yes. Jean-François yes. comforts me. Anyway. If you and Jean-François could work together on another project, what would it be? Oh, I really hope we will work together on a straight play. Good. Without singing. You don't have. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe just a song here and there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Any, Mike, anything in the works? Anything? <laughs> no, no. All right. No, no. All right. But I know that he he is um, he writes also his own plays. Yes. So yes. maybe one day he will write something for me, and we'll remember that I told him. Would you let a camera crew into film that so you uh, keep it forever? <laughs> maybe not. But uh, we, who, who knows? If it's the price to pay, maybe. Maybe, <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Uh, and I've been asked to ask you about coming projects. How is, how is your Egyptian life? 
My this Egyptian week. life um, is very interesting because now I have to dance because it's <gasps> not enough to have to sing, of course. Of course. So no. Handel because is not difficult not enough. Because you of course, they're going to make you dance. So Maybe spin on your head. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite difficult, but it's a very, very beautiful production by David McVicker. Yeah. That's the production of uh, Glyndebourne. Right. And I try to imitate the wonderful Danielle Denise. <laughs> Uh, which is not easy because she is a, a wonderful dancer and singer. So it's true. Voilà. It's true. So come and see Nathalie Dussé at the Met next month in Giulio Cesare of Handel. It will be brilliant. Thank you so much for spending a little time You're with welcome. us.